All right, thank you for joining me on this podcast about Doppler radar and precipitation. So we're going to take a look at how Doppler radar works and have a little bit more details on some of the nuances of Doppler radar. So what you're looking at here, part A on the left, that is a Doppler radar tower some miles away from a city, blue skies there and the land. And then to the right is the actual imagery that you'll see from the Doppler radar. And we're going to start out with what's known as reflectivity or precipitation intensity. This is a case when the Doppler radar is literally sending out a pulse of electromagnetic radiation and then listening for what bounces back. So uh, there we have a cloud form. The Doppler radar doesn't see the cloud. What it sees is the precipitation, first that light rain. And literally the electromagnetic pulse uh, from the Doppler radar site bounces back or is reflected back to the radar site. It listens and based on how much is reflected back, that's how intense the rain is, it paints the image uh, as heavier and heavier rain. We think of the light greens as light rain and the yellows and the oranges as heavier rain and then once we get up to the red uh, that is the very very heavy rain that we see now on the Doppler radar site. So as this continues the cloud begins to dissipate and the rain starts to weaken and now we see hail falling out and this really paints us this dark dark red. The hail reflects back a great deal more of the radar uh, pulse and so it paints it as a, as a darker red. Now the other thing we see uh, with reflectivity is we can see the movement of the storm. Here the storm is moving from the radar site toward the city and we can see on the radar image uh, that cell, that thunderstorm cell, moving away from the radar site uh, toward the city itself. So Doppler radar reflectivity can give us an idea of the intensity, the movement. It can also add up how much precipitation has fallen and give us a uh, storm total. So this is how much precipitation fell up to about 1.7 inches of rain over an hour. Um, the other thing that Doppler radar can do is it can indicate radial velocity. It can tell us which way the winds are moving in the storm. And so this is very important because this allows us to see thunderstorms that are actually rotating, thunderstorms that have what's known as a mesocyclone. So in the case of this storm, the winds are blowing the rains away and the Doppler radar using the Doppler effect I can see the shift in frequency and tells it that the winds are moving away and in the case where the winds start blowing the rain back toward the radar site it is going to see the Doppler shift showing that the winds are moving toward the radar site and the Doppler shift is the frequency of the radiation returning back to the radar site and so you can see where winds are moving away from the radar site that's typically painted in the, the reds and where winds are moving toward the radar site and that's going to be typically painted in the greens and the blues. Uh, and so in the situation where we have some shear on the ground, meaning there's winds moving in two different directions at the surface and then aloft, uh, that shear gets a little tube of air rolling at the surface and then when that thunderstorm develops, it literally pulls that tube of rotating air uh, into the upright and you get this rotating updraft. So in this storm, some of the winds are moving away from the radar site and some of the winds are moving toward the radar site and you can see that on the radar imagery with the reds where the winds are moving away and the greens where the winds are moving toward the radar site and that tells us that that whole thunderstorm is rotating and that rotating thunderstorm that is the mesocyclone and it's mesocyclones that generate the most intense thunderstorms and also the, the types of thunderstorms that will most likely generate tornadic activity and in this case um, on the Doppler radar we do see uh, that well we don't see it on Doppler radar that's a good point we, we see the tornado has formed beneath that storm you don't actually see the tornado itself on radar. What you see is the rotating thunderstorm, the mesocyclone. So Doppler radar is effective at showing us the precipitation amounts, the intensity, that's with reflectivity. That can also show us the direction that the storms are moving and how fast they're moving. But when we switch it to this reflectivity to uh, velocity, so we have reflectivity as a reflection back of the, uh, the intensity of, of the rainfall. When we switch it to velocity, that's when we can see which way the winds are moving within the structure of the storm. And we know that a storm with winds moving away and toward the radar site is a storm that's rotating. And a rotating thunderstorm is the type of thunderstorm, a mesocyclone type of thunderstorm that can generate severe weather, including tornadoes.